What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Walkout Network. It's your man, Ant Walker, here with the latest edition, the new and improved version of the Living Death Show. What a fantastic time to come up off the couch and jump in front of a microphone because we have news to discuss today. Francis Ngannou, the former heavyweight champion of the UFC, is now uh, a PFL signee. And not just a PFL signee, actual partnership with the promotion. And there is a ton to unpack. And I would not like to talk about this with anyone else but the two gentlemen you see beside me. First up is the Jack of All Trades, who's master of them all, Mr. Ben Duffy, the senior editor of Sherlock.com. And of course, the man who anchors the panel all the time with the facts, the facts, the stats, and the numbers, the associate editor of Sherlock.com. And my good friend, Jay Petri. Fellas, good to see you as always. And let's let's get to it. Francis Ngannou, um, no longer a free agent. What was your your first reaction when this news broke um, that it was PFL and not boxing, not one championship, not any other uh, big name in the fight world? Well, it sort of is boxing. Considering that he's probably not going to fight for PFL until at least 2024. Uh, I mean, he's already projecting he's not going to fight for PFL until 2024 because he's going to box this year. And now the idea is being thrown out that he might take a warm up fight or two before he fights a Tyson Fury type, which could push it into late 2024, into 2025. I mean, it is heavyweight, but at the same time, we're talking about a 36 year old man. I that that's just me like adding some qualifiers to your to your uh, question. I was shocked. Who breaks this kind of news at four in the fucking morning? Like, where was this the, the, the right time to break news in? What part of the world? I just in the middle of the Pacific somewhere. I, I mean, luckily, I'm awake at four in the morning. But, dude, like what? <laughs> Maybe this this was maybe catering to his uh, his fan base in his home continent of Africa. I, I I can't I don't know what the time zone breakdown is to where he is is from um, when when that news broke. But he's also you know the chairman of PFL Africa. Yeah. Um, so well, this now is, is. <laughs> yeah now. now it is yeah. So this is big news for for the African market. Just just mixed martial arts as a whole in that continent that there is the PFL is making a push there and they've got a a star like Nganu at the at the helm. Uh, Jay, what did you make of this news when it, you first heard it? I okay. There there's there's I mean there's obviously so much to unpack here. Uh, one of the things I was desperately searching for was some kind of number, some kind of any specific information to tie you know this down to because the terms weren't disclosed you know the 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 time when he was going to fight again weren't disclosed um there was very little in the in actual specifics which i mean we know how these things work it's a multi-fight deal blah 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 so we know that the, the only things we really know is that according to this agreement which according to this agreement that's what we can follow um, is that Nagano is supposed to fight for PFL in the MMA section two or three times starting sometime in 2024. And the stat of the week, therefore, if it's the quantifiable number, is two or two million, depending on what you want to go with it, because the only other real statistic that came from it, and I think it actually didn't come from the release. I think it came from... It uh mma hour or one of one of his interviews he did because it was you know he's running the gamut today uh where his prospective opponents in pfl must make a minimum of two million dollars to fight him which boy oh boy if that didn't open the floodgates um i see there's a recent uh a free agent that the ufc just you know we knew it was going to happen and, and it was based on his unsuccessful performance uh, this past weekend. But you got to, I don't have a bottle with me. You got to pour one out for Chase Sherman. Or you light a candle for Chase Sherman because Chase Sherman's on the market, baby. And you get an, a 15 fight UFC veteran. You got yourself a, a stew going. You know, I, it, I, it, I, you're going to have like 
some shrimp toast going because he is just going to be smoothed out on the canvas if you can put him in there against Francis and Ganu. I mean, there are a lot of people that are going to be volunteering to get their chin checked with, with think, this oh, news. Like Ver- Verdum already posted an oh, elaborate sure. video. Yeah, I mean, like Verdum is already yeah, yeah, and he's and and he's already you know taken the PFL juice. Uh, if you look at his most recent photos, so yeah. I think I think he's he's physically already preparing himself for for such a conquest. I mean, there there are a plethora of heavyweights that that matter at least name value um, that sort of makes sense again for this sort of thing. I mean, we've discussed some of these names before. Uh, Roy Nelson just had a successful bare knuckle MMA debut uh, about a week ago. Um, and, and game bread, uh, game bread's bare knuckle uh, promotion. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he got the call. Um, we we mentioned Fabricio for Doom. Um, your, your your boy Juan Adams. You know, I could see him coming off the couch for for this one. Um, they they're Chase Sherman uh, as we mentioned before, and then that's and and those those last two names are so sort of the 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 lower end, but they they fit the criteria to have UFC vet. Versus right. the the lineal UFC champion, kind of hard to not be intrigued by that, don't you think? Like, I mean, obviously we're diehard fans, so we we were gonna have a more nuanced approach to it. But if you're just the regular guy who who wants to tune in and see this guy who's built like an action figure go out and just lamp somebody, and you know you know he's he's got some tension with John Jones in the UFC and whatnot. Yeah, Chase Sherman makes sense. Fine, throw him in there. Um, it it makes a lot of sense. I mean, they just uh, didn't PFL just sign uh, uh, Cedric. Um, I'm a Dume. screw up the Dume. Yeah, so Dume, yeah. yeah, there there are names out there that the PFL can reach out to that we'd be intrigued by to see this. But being intrigued by this is not really the point. If you're Francis Ngannou, I think it's just keeping your name out there and lamp people and get paid. And I think that's a uh, Check, check, and check. He's uh, he, he's checking all the boxes there. Agree. I think this is probably, like, I was pleasantly surprised as somebody that wanted him to land someplace where he could make money and I could see him fight. I was pleasantly surprised that he ended up with PFL. I kind of figured that wasn't going to happen. I have the feeling that once the details of this deal come out, it will turn out that he that Nganu signed for less money than he probably would have hoped a year ago. I think he got out there into the market last year, walked away from his title, had his, you know, list of his, I, I, I'm not going to say demands. It's like his, his wish list that the UFC couldn't or wouldn't meet. And he made the rounds like Bellator talked to him and then publicly expressed non-interest. One championship talked to him publicly expressed on interest BKFC did. I think he probably like he probably pulled in with PFL as kind of the last port in the storm. This was the last promotion with anything resembling the financial ballast to give him a number that wasn't insulting. And he is getting uh you know like extra sprinkles on top. He gets the uh the president of pfl uh africa deal he gets to box which is which was a a a major sticking point with uh the ufc but i don't know man like i am glad that he got this deal i hope it keeps him in the public eye i hope it's gonna end up paying him uh, a reasonable amount of money but yeah like i didn't even expect it to turn out this well i thought Bingani was going to end up getting really the short end of the stick. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with Ben. I, I mean, I think even on the show, I so much as said that he's going to be back with the UFC because there's just nobody that can really fill it out, fill out, you know, what what he's looking for and pay him the way that 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 he wanted to. Like, it's very specific that we don't know how much PFL is paying him. That yeah. that is a a very intentional move because if if we're being honest. If he if he took less than half of you know there was the John Jones eight to ten million dollar money that was floating around and and all that the chatter we hear about if it was like two or three if it's like three or four mil in theory that would devalue his stock because he took less money than he was kind of going for but 
it's more money than anybody else in the sport is pretty much making. And it's PFL. This is PFL here we're talking about, where their biggest show, I think, cracked like 300,000 viewers on ESP on one Friday night. We're not talking about a, 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 a network that or a, a promotion that draws a million eyeballs. Um, if, if, I mean, this is, this is a very, I guess partisan is probably the right word, uh, source where Chris Cyborg stated that she had the numbers for the PFL pay-per-view and it was something like 12 to 14,000 for when they charged $50 to do it. I don't believe that's far off from the mark and that's not paying for anything. If you're doing $50 times, actually, if you're doing $25 times 10, 12 to 14,000, that's not paying for, you know, the price of admission or for these fighters. So I'm surprised that PFL was able to come up with this money, but there's a big, there's a big question mark here. PFL. So they, they signed Kayla Harrison. They signed Paul. Actually, I'll, the Kayla Harrison thing is kind of actually up in the air because from what she was saying, her contract with PFL is done at the end of this year, and she's not fighting in the tournament. So what is she doing? Is it just going to lapse? Is it over? I don't know. And then the Paul brother, whichever one the Paul brother is. That's not a roster. That's not a pay-per-view plan. That's a fighter. This isn't a baseball team picking up a major free agent, and and you're you're good to go because you've got the big star, and you're paying the pitcher that can crush it. Uh, uh, 200, 300 million dollars. You're picked up a fighter, a great fighter, a pound for pound f- talented fighter, the number one heavyweight in the world, the lineal UFC heavyweight champion. But this is a combat sport. This is great. I, I'm so happy for Nkanu, but I don't know if I understand PFL's logic. And maybe that's the way I kind of want to ask, like, Ant, I want you to to kind of get, because they get Nganu, but Nganu is not a pay-per-view draw. We've seen it. I've, I've attended Nganu pay-per-view live. It was big, but it wasn't any of the names that you think of that you, you know, blockbuster. You know, the line for the TD Garden when he fought Stipe wasn't 12 miles long, and people were going, oh, my God, Boston was ram packed when that was happening and he was smashing fools up until he met stipe and he so he's not a huge draw and he's not going to be fighting in the sport for a year a year plus how does this benefit pfl other than attaching his name to the league because i gotta be honest pfl africa is that it world series of fighting did a very similar international rebranding World, World Series of Fighting GC, and they spread out and they tried to go international, and it went nowhere, and they're still being sued to this day because of it. So I, I don't know. <laughs> and Ben, what 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 does PFL have to stand to gain here other than picking up this super free agent? I, I think they've abandoned the idea of a full-on fight league that's going to consistently attract viewership, and now they're chasing the dollar and they're chasing the big names. I think the Jake Paul signing was the first indicator of that. Um, that that you that now and now with with Jake Paul and with Francis Ngannou, you have a couple of personalities there that can attract pay per view dollars. That can attract the the casual fan who wasn't lining around the corner to watch uh, Francis fight Stipe. Now there's a lot more there's a lot more controversy surrounding his name. Therefore, a lot more eyeballs are going to be on it. Um, this is this is sort of I, I feel an end game move for PFL because if you are one of the the shadow investors or you know the venture capitalists that are that are constantly funneling money into this promotion, well, this doesn't work. The 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 bottom falls out uh, from from what I can tell. And we've heard rumors of PFL being in financial trouble several years ago. We like. We, I know we amongst ourselves heard separate things from separate people and kind of discussed like, well, it doesn't sound like that they're, they're exactly just swimming in money right now. That I, I would assume that venture capitalists are, are looking to see if this is worth sinking any money uh, into any, any further. And this is sort of that last ditch effort to, to get things going. Now, as far as Francis himself is concerned, I think the results of this validate a lot of the things he'd been saying from jump when he was running into these these uh, roadblocks with the UFC. The you know 
I think the money, the money that he's getting paid, I'm sure it's more than 99% of UFC fighters are making, even if it's not the eight to 10 million that we heard that, that was offered to him for, for the Jones fight. But the fact that he is willing to sacrifice a two, one to $2 million that certainly would have gone in his pocket to give to the other guy says a whole lot. It says that he didn't necessarily want the biggest check to say, Hey, you're fighting. Here you go here. Take this boatload of money. No, he wanted a seat at the table. That's what he wanted. That's more valuable to money than him right now, from what I can tell, because this is the clearest indicator that it is, that he is guaranteed his opponent a purse. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, I cannot recall any time a fighter negotiated that before knowing who the opponent was. This isn't a, a Mayweather-Pacquiao situation where you've got two of these huge superstars that want to meet each other, so they got to figure out who's going to get paid what, or, or Fury and Wilder, and who's going to get paid what, and their teams have to sit and negotiate with one another. Like, no, this is one lone person yeah. who could have taken one to two million dollars more. It says, no, I want to give that to my opponent. That's a, that's someone who's being like proven to be selfless. Yeah. Like, that's mm -hmm. literally putting your money where your mouth is. Because his mouth cost him one to two million dollars. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you know, so I, I think this this sort of validates a lot of what he was saying and, and confirms that he came to the to the negotiating table with the UFC demanding things for other fighters, and they weren't willing to meet it. The UFC seemed like they they would rather here here is ten million dollars, uh, an unprecedented amount of money to just guarantee someone uh, that's not named Conor McGregor which quite frankly, I don't know if Conor McGregor was guaranteed that much. Uh, it just got, got more on the back end, but another story. Um, <laughs> like, so, so you're telling me, you're telling me that the, the UFC was willing to give him just $10 million guaranteed. Um, but nothing like, no, we're not, you're not having a shred of power in this organization. Like he's, he's a part owner. Yeah, uh, boy, these are, he's an executive for the company now. Mm -hmm. Even if this is a venture that fails, this is this is something that this has given him exactly what he wanted. But I'll tell you, gentlemen, I'll tell you when I was pretty certain that we were going to hear some news about Ngannou. Um, as I saw Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua's back and forth turning up in volume which I think happened in the last week and a half or something like that. We started seeing them going back and forth more and you're hearing things about their negotiations. That's when I was like, oh, I I, I don't think Wilder and, and, and Ghana were going to see each other next. Now, looks like Wilder and Wilder is still in the plans for Ngannou, but somewhere down the line and tune-up fights and all that stuff, like, no, this is – the moment I heard that, okay, Wilder is Wilder and Joshua are looking at each other. Well, that means that means that Ngannou is is probably going to come out come out the rabbit hole with something real soon. Just just to follow that up, I know Delphi you have something to say. In one minute, currently, right this second, so it'll be old news when we publish and go. In one minute, allegedly, Dana White has a breaking news announcement which is going to be a big fight, a Chandler McGregor type of thing, because you know how these things work. That is, that's why I, that's why I mentioned, because it's exactly what you said is Wilder and Joshua turns out. So Ngannou has to strategically keep him. If Ngannou said they've been verbally in the, this has been in the works for months, this was a strategic time to drop it. And I would say Aunt, to, to keep him in the spot, in the focus uh, to, to launch this announcement, was 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 very intentional um yeah to, to kind of turn it back though because i know that i'm i'm actually really curious ben's thoughts um ant said it very well he, you know he, he reserved himself a spot at the table but ben is this did he reserve himself a table on the titanic or there you know something i i should know better by now because PFL's embrace of the season format when they completed the transition from WSOF almost exactly coincided with my entering 
the MMA media space in a professional capacity. And so I've been enjoying PFL for five years plus now and asking friends and colleagues literally every year, do you think they make it another year? So I should know better by now, but I still think it's worth asking. Does Francis Ngannou ever step into a cage for PFL? That's a really good question. Yes. I like that question better. I think you're probably right. I mean, I just pointed out that I've, the sky has been falling in somebody's opinion for literally PFL's entire existence. And they keep soldiering on. And frankly, (laughs) they keep making pretty big moves. Uh, but here they're literally pushing this a year down, you know, not necessarily a full year down the road, but into the next calendar year. And there is a hefty, at least implied price tag assigned to it. Like if we know that Nganu's opponent is getting $2 million, he's certainly not getting less than that. Like they're, uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of financial shape PFL is in th- this time next year. Well, if you're one of those venture capitalists, you keep this going until you figure out whether this Francis Ngannou gamble pays off. So I think at the very least, things will run until we see Francis Ngannou stepping into the cage. If I remember correctly, one of the numbers that we were kind of given about this arrangement was in addition to the money that he'll be making, Ngannou is going to be eligible for is it 50% of the revenue of the event or something? Uh, the gate some, revenue it, I, and, yeah. I forget which, which breakdown it was. If it was about a pay-per-view. boxing type deal, if it was, mm-hmm. it was a boxing type deal. It was a 50% kind of situation. Now I thought Paul had a similar arrangement. So how? Well, yeah. They- I mean, uh, everyone that signs one of their super fight contracts is supposed to get a 50% split of revenue generated by their fights. Right. So if that means that Jake Paul and Francis are going to fight in the same card, no, that means that they, they fight on separate cards, but each one I can feel, be used to help promote the other. I, I can't imagine PFL would have multiple pay-per-views that aren't involving those guys. Just because, I, I mean, you're probably right in terms of a, a, a logical perspective, but I just can't see P, P, uh, PFL devolving, not evolving, devolving into a six pay-per-views a year kind of company. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's a market for them. Like July... This this coming July, there are two UFC pay per view events. That's that's a lot to ask for fans. And there was there was that stretch of like, I mean, Ben, what were you talking about the preview? Was it uh, three pay per views in the span of like a month and a half or something yep. like that? You remember you remember that? Yeah. That's that's adding fifty bucks, which I'm presuming is going to be the price tag, is a real tough ask for Ngannou versus. All right, you ready for Dana's big announcement? Oh yeah, I am. Yeah. Poirier versus Gaethje 2 in Salt Lake City at UFC 291. Okay. Great okay. fight, but okay. all right. Okay, Sorry, let's talk we're about still Francis. talking about Francis. Right. <laughs> yeah, let's keep talk- talking about Francis Ngannou. Also, nice Aljo, try, Dana. Also, Aljo versus Sean O'Malley in uh, Boston, uh, paper, headlining. In uh, August. And, and the co-main will be Willie Jean versus Amanda Lemos. Okay. Okay. They're, um, hmm, all right. I they're, guess something, something went wrong trying to – Get a get a uh, a fight going in China. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. So, I'm back to Francis Ngannou. Ngannou. Still, still oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tony Ferguson versus Bobby Green. Tony Tony Ferguson versus Los Bobby Angeles Green. County. Bobby oh. King Green. Okay. Or versus King or whatever his real name is now. Michael Chiesa. Whoa. This is okay. I'm sorry. The, I, uh, I know we we didn't talk about Ngannou. Uh The Utah 291. Uh, just. No freaking way. Poirier versus Gaethje is for the vacant BMF title. Oh my god, that's the main oh, event. Wow. Oh wow, they pulled that one out there. Apparently, ass this that's morning. the main event. Oh, wow. they Apparently, pulled that that's out the main event morning. because the, the co-main event is Jan Blahovich versus Alex Pereira, uh, Paula Costa versus Iker Aliskara. That's interesting. Uh, Tony Ferguson, Bobby Green, Kiesa, my uh, Kiesa, Kevin Holland. Yeah, I, dope fights like dope fights. Fantastic. Oh, let's card. talk about Ngannou. Yeah, but I mean, seriously, we're talking about one entertaining card versus something that, if it succeeds, changes the landscape of the sport. I feel like I feel like this is probably a good question if we want to kind of circle the wagons here because we, you know, we want to keep it to like a half hour show. Um, how do they? How do they arrange for him to fight somebody? Like, 
is it a free agent? Is it that PFL hopes that this this uh, uh, 2024 delay is actually strategic to get a UFC fighter to fight out of his contract to then be a, a, attracted to a PFL $2 million fight? Is it Ben Rothwell, who who, who very openly claimed, clamored for the fight? What I, do they, I don't know how I, they do it. I, what I, do they I, do? They've done it already. Yep. By putting out the information that, that Francis Ngannou's opponent is going to get a minimum of $2 million, that means you've got enough people that are going to stand up and say, yeah, I'll take I, I guarantee you, Alistair Overeem Everybody right except now, for John Jones is, is like, yeah. that's more than they make. Eight-year yeah. deal for that guy, or eight-fight eight, eight fight deal for Jones, so he's stuck. Al- Alistair Overeem Seven. just woke up from what Ngannou did to him several years ago, and he would volunteer for that all over again for $2 million. He don't remember. Don't he of course he did. Like, 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 like Fedor, Fedor right now has closed his Bible and and put up and put up his his study book for his you know the degree he's going after right now and he and he's he's taken off the sweater and he's like yeah i, I think i could do this one more time put it, down it both doesn't... ice cream cones like the wooden <laughs> russian cross like yeah. <laughs> two million dollars is a lot of money in mixed martial arts there are there there will be boxers yes that will oh i'll try mma for yep. two million dollars this is this is not going to be hard for them to find someone to volunteer themselves as tribute. Andy Ruiz is like, how much I got away? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is, I mean, this is this is going to there. There is a line around the corner of PFL's corporate office right now. I guarantee you that of of heavyweights that that are trying to get on this to fight in Ghana and get that two million dollars. Because one of the statements, I think it was Don Davis or a Don Davis. Uh, a like person uh, stated that one of the intentions was that the winner of 2024's or 2023's heavyweight tournament season would then get a shot to fight in Ganu. That that's the, that's the prize at the end of the rainbow. But to quote Keith Schillen, who Ben's co-host on, on the Schillen and Duffy show on sure dog, he killed me this morning because I read his tweet seriously until I realized it was not. It came out at like eight in the morning. I would die. He said, I, he said, I quote, I'm so excited for Francis Ngannou fighting for the PFL. When I think of top MMA fights, I think of Ngannou versus Mo Green or Ngannou versus Ante D'Elia. And Ante D'Elia <laughs> might win the PFL season again and could be the next opponent. I'm telling you, man. It it doesn't help that like half their best fighters just barely popped for a whole like yeah pharmacy worth of shit. Like, I'm... <laughs> hey, but you know what? He's going to make his debut after the suspension should have already been served out from the commission. Well, and, so. <laughs> and I mean, like I'm sure Verdum is like, "Who? Glad I wasn't oh, in the yeah. pool for that." Because you've yeah. seen that dude recently. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's living his best life, and now now he's like. Running out to the bodega to get some cleanser tea. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting drinking cranberry juice yeah. by the gallon. I mean, Bruno Capoloza tested positive for a testosterone modulator. Like, we're talking like, you got to, this like, is a, yeah. Like, you got mofos testing positive yeah. for technology. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, it's got like a chip implanted at the base of his skull. It's like someone tested positive for being a cyborg. Like, we, <laughs> yeah, Skynet positive. I, I, I swear, man. Um, so so before we, we wrap things up, I want to get just very briefly to sort of the reactions that we've seen, namely the reaction of one John Jones, the, the one guy you probably say is Francis Ngannou's biggest rival without ever actually laying a hand on him. Um, so, so, gentlemen, um, John Jones tweeted out something to the effect of, like, how can you call yourself the, the baddest man on, on the planet from across the street, to which Ngannou very, very just... Yeah. On, on his yeah. reply then come across the street um it, it, fellas am i being um hyperbolic when i say this is exactly why there will never be a union for mixed martial artists because we have one guy who in very recent memory was highly upset with his contractual status was very public about it and sat out actually consulted the the services of richard schaefer uh, a guy who was very, very deeply embedded and respected in the boxing world, uh, most notably with Golden Boy. And this was his plan, right? Um, now someone else is on it. Now you got problems with it. What, why? Why Why are we doing this, fellas? Because it's a sport where everybody sees it 
everybody sees everyone else's rivals just literally in competitive terms and they see it as a zero sum game. I, I mean, we're talking about people that are competing for one sixth of the UFC's pie. Like, and all they see is like that, that 16% slice of pie that they're fighting over and ignoring the other 84%. It's, it's wild. There's the, it's the mentality that, well, I'm in the lifeboat now I'll pull up the rope. That's that's literally John Jones's uh, approach to this, and he has always been the UFC's bratty kid. Like he, I mean, he is he has fucked up their program so many times with his misbehavior, but to them, he has generally been very much company man. Like it's a it's a weird weird thing that i am not qualified to diagnose psychologically like like you want like you look at that and you look at john jones throwing shots and you just want to think is this like notice me senpai is this like dana look i'm being i'm, I'm being a team guy I, I i love the ufc i'm trashing somebody else because there is literally nothing that can come of what is happening here john jones as i stated is currently through one fight of an eight fight contract with the UFC. So he's not going anywhere. He's not crossing any streets unless he will be sued and I'm tied up worse than any Alvarez was when he did that Bellator switcheroo thing. Like there's nothing that can come of it. So that's kind of what bugs me more than anything is that you're right. And there, there's going to be no union. Of, they could both use this as a moment, a teachable moment of we both got what we wanted from different ways to get it. You can too, just buy this, you know, buy this 3599 audio tape and we'll tell you all about it. Just, there are so many ways that it could be, they could work together or team up, but they're never going to fight. The, the the end that's the that is the n word of this sport right now the never never i don't say hold on hold on hold on let me let me okay, okay, okay. Uh, i was about and to go a whole other direction well, well, is, is, it, is it is it never with the hard r or is it never <laughs> okay fine okay good question, ben. Good question. you're working here because no what i'm trying to say is that never is a word that doesn't come up in these sports there's always a way, there's always something that can be managed. Yes, I realize how it came off. I apologize if it sounded... It came off? Pause. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's all right, my name. Never is a situation that doesn't happen. There's always something that can happen. Eddie Alvarez can get to the UFC. Rampage can get over to Bellator and be under UFC contract. There's always something. But this situation that they have now is is locked down until Francis Ngannou is like 44, 45. And I don't think he's going to be fighting that long. So just in terms of logical and, and anything anything about it, I, it just feels like you're keeping your name in the news more than, yeah. I don't uh, know. I mean, Jones is also, <sighs> he's not that calculating a, a guy. Like he, he, you will get like, heart on the sleeve off the cuff reactions mm -hmm. from him and i bet he is upset on some level like th nothing will make me laugh faster than the idea that either of these guys is scared of the other john jones thinks he can beat francis ngano he is sure of it ngano is sure that he can beat jones so jones is probably also like well shit now i'm locked here for seven more fights and one of the guys that we could have guaranteed each other a pretty good payday and i wanted to see if i could beat this dude yes mm-hmm is, is not going to be one of them. Yeah. He's speaking on, on a sort of a, a professional and personal disappointment um, as opposed to anything necessarily malicious. He just isn't exactly the, the most PR savvy guy out there in, in the world as we, we know by now. <laughs> no um, well, fellas, I, I think that's going to do it for this discussion um, about Francis Ngannou's conscious situation. Obviously we're going to talk about this more as we do more segments and more news unfolds and, you know, come 2024 when he actually fights um we'll, we'll we'll get all to it but um remember to like subscribe share tell a friend to tell a friend tell that friend to tell 10 more friends check out ben and jay on shirtdog.com you can find my work on ringside intel remember stay beautiful stay positive and stay sexy i'll see you when i see you peace <laughs>